Okay, y'all, it's your girl, Dia Direct, and welcome back to the Superpower Her Podcast. Listen, we're doing something a little different today, and I want to talk to you in a way that I haven't before. Today's topic is permission to choose yourself. Permission to choose yourself. And when I talk about permission to choose yourself, I'm talking about owning your truth, making hard decisions, um, taking care of yourself mentally, emotionally, physically. Those are the three things that I want you to remember as we talk. But first, I want to tell you a story about my girl, Tanita. Tanita was my first manager when I moved to Dallas uh, to be producer for the Tom Jordan Morning Show. And um, she had a big personality, loved, loved, loved radio. And over the years, we really developed a powerful relationship. It was unique. Um, a lot of people weren't aware of some of the conversations and the connection that we had, but it was authentic. And Tanita went on to uh, work in different areas. And last year, she even went to the Essence Festival with her team and um, her radio team. And um, earlier in the year, like many people, Tanita had really um, come down with a bad case of COVID. And she was the kind of person that, you know, come rain or shine, you know, snow, sleet, whatever. She was going to work. <laughs> She's going to get the job done and she was going to stay um, as early or as late as it took to get it done because she was so ambitious and so passionate about the work that she did. She was also a single mom. I want to talk to you about Tanita because um, even though Sometimes we we think we're stronger than we really are. We're overly ambitious about what our bodies and brains can do. Um, Tanita was no different. And so while her spirit wanted to go back to work, maybe it was too soon. Um, and it was definitely too soon to travel. And I believe doctors had told her the same thing. And so she was at Essence Festival last year. She got the job done. And as it turns out, it was also on her birthday. And so her team was going to take her out to get something to eat. And um, make a long story short, Tanita had a challenge breathing. And um, she called downstairs to get some help. Eventually, you know, the paramedics came, um, but she fell into a coma. Unfortunately, Tanita never recovered. And in her 40s, not only did she pass away, but I understand that her mother said that her time of death was the same time that she was born. And so some might say it was her time. But the reality is, Tanita loved what she did, maybe, just maybe, more than she loved taking care of herself. And that's really what I want to talk to you about today when we talk about the topic of permission to choose yourself. I want us to start making better decisions about what we do and why we're doing it and owning our truth about what it might take to put us in that position. And when you realize that you may be in a space in life where you're going really, really hard, you're um, burning the midnight oil and it's taking a toll on you. I want you to get quiet enough in your body and your spirit and your soul to like take inventory, right? To really look at yourself, to feel what you're feeling versus just moving fast all the time and focusing on what needs to happen outside of yourself and start doing more time to do some inner um, inventory and to really see what's going on with me. How do I feel? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Do I have to do it right now? Is it something that can wait until tomorrow? Is there a smarter or better way that I can do it? Can I delegate? Can I ask for help? Can I focus on one thing um, or two things versus five or seven things? What is it that you can do to Make better, smarter, healthier decisions. I want you to do that self and inner inventory. And I want you to be honest with yourself. And when you own that truth, that may mean you may need to make adjustments 
to how you did things. Just because it's how you used to do it, it doesn't mean that's the way that you need to continue to do it, right? I had a good friend who is also experiencing some health issues. And the reality is she's judging herself because she can't move the way that she used to move. And one of the things we talked about in our conversation is that you're still you, right? Like whatever you're going through, you're still you. But it might mean that this is the time in life. This is the reminder. This is the opportunity that God is giving you to do life differently, right? To make new and different decisions about how you do what you do. Um, and to really think about does what I'm doing or how I've been doing it, is it still working for me? Is it serving me well, right? Um, how do I feel when I do these things? If you find that the things that you've been doing don't feel good anymore, that it feels not good to you more than it does feel good, um, that it's stressing you out, that it's um, you can feel the, the, the stress in your body or you, you're getting headaches or you can feel it in your gut or you find yourself tired all the time or you find yourself dreading it. Those are clues that it might be time to do something a little bit different. And when you get those clues, listen to them. It's better for you to listen to them and for you to own it than for those decisions to own you, right? Because your body will tell you the truth. And if you don't take care of it, it will shut down. It will tell you, I don't want to do this anymore. It's the same thing with your spirit, right? It's the same thing with your um, your energy, your mental ability. If your spirit is grieved, if it's vexed, if you're sad, your spirit is going to talk to you. It's going to tell you, eh, I'm not feeling it. I want you to take enough time to love yourself and to listen, to honor that. And then make new and better decisions about how you do what you do. And that might mean making hard decisions about who you spend time with, about your relationships. I'm talking your personal relationships. I'm talking your social relationships your familiar relationships, and your professional relationships. You may have to have some hard conversations, number one, with yourself. Number two, you may need to pivot or shift um, how you engage with certain people, or you may need to completely disengage because it's not a part of where you're supposed to be in this season. I think sometimes we get caught up in how we think things look, how we think it needs to be, who the social crowd is, who we've always spent time with, who we love. And it just is what we know how to do or what we desire. But if those relationships don't feel good anymore and they don't feel good more than they do feel good, that too is a sign. And that too may mean you need to have some new and different, sometimes hard and uncomfortable conversations. But that's also, again, an opportunity for you to choose yourself. Because if you're choosing your relationships um, socially, spiritually, um, professionally, over your relationship with yourself, your priorities are out of order. Because in reality, you can't even show up good for another relationship if you're not showing up well for yourself if you're not showing up good for yourself if you're not good everything that you're attached to is going to suffer and so that's why it's always curious to me because i've done it too but when i really begin to study and think about these things it became really curious to me that we say things to ourselves like i don't have time to do this i don't i can't i can't um Tell this person no or, you know, what will they think or, or say? What do you think or say? <laughs> How do you feel? Are you choosing people over you? Because the other thing that I found out is if you pay attention to the patterns, right, of your relationships, a lot of times the people that you're sacrificing yourself for, they'll be quick to tell you, hey, listen. I'm not going to be able to make it. Hey, something else came up. I'll catch you the next time. They'll tell you their truth. Pay attention to those signs. When you see that other people in your life are choosing themselves, 
but you're not doing the same. Mm -hmm. That's a sign. And so as we think about the third thing, which is taking care of yourself, the first two things are really what it takes to take care of yourself. Being honest with you about how you feel and then make new and different decisions. Being real with yourself about what relationships are working for you. And then being very, very intentional every day about how you take care of you. And I'll tell you three things that I share in my new book. Um, and it's the three M's. How you spend your mornings are the first things that you can control on any given day. And so that's meditation and motivation. That's moving, moving your body. These are three things that you can do to set the atmosphere for your day. How you meditate, spend time, wake up to yourself. Like literally, if you're waking up to your phone and your social media or a phone call or your email before you've mm -hmm. even connected with yourself, your own body, your spirit, mm, it's out of order. Um, motivation, right? Before you, I know you're important. I know you got big things to do. But before you pour out to the whole world or to your job or to your kids or to your family, what are you doing to set yourself up properly? Who's feeding into you? Who's taking care of the caretaker, right? So find something, whether it's the Bible, whether it's affirmations, whether it's a motivational speaker, what are you using to infuse your spirit, to fill up your cup? Make sure you're doing that. And then movement. Your body needs to move. It's good for your mood. It gets those endorphins going in your brain. Um, and so not only is it good for you physically, it's good for you uh, mentally and emotionally. If you suffer with uh, depression, it's really helpful for that. Exercise is helpful for that. And then if you go outside in the sun to do it, that's also a mood booster. So I want you to give yourself permission you are the boss of this thing to take care of yourself. And I want you to be a student who's learned from maybe the, um, the overzealous, who's, how, what's the word I want to say? I want you to learn from Tanita. I want you to learn from somebody else that you may know who just pushed it a little too hard or who didn't listen to that last message that told you, girl, sit down. <laughs> uh, you're really not feeling it today. It might save your life. It might. And that is my prayer for you. And that's what I talk about in my new book. I know you're successful. You're successful. But are you okay? And these are real strategies that I give in the book. And there's so much more to come. I dedicated this book to Tanita. And her life story has really shaped um, the direction that the book has gone in. I really do believe that it's life changing and saving. It works if you work it like anything else we do. Um, but it is my gift to the world. And if I die tomorrow, I do believe it's a part of my legacy that I can really be proud of and that will live beyond me. Make sure you're doing things that live beyond you. And those decisions that you make, make sure you're investing in the things that also are investing back in you and loving the people that are loving you and doing the things that love you back because if the thing that you're giving all your time and energy to is something that you can be replaced by, like the title that you hold, if for whatever reason you no longer are at that job or in that organization, somebody else is going to take that title and position. And yes, you are important and you made a difference, but is it loving you? starts with you. That's the first and best relationship that we all can have. It's not selfish. It's necessary. And it's life changing and hopefully saving. 
So I hope this is spoke to your heart and your spirit. Share it with somebody else who you know needs this message. And uh, we'll talk until the next episode. I'm your girl, Dia Direct. Take care of yourself. Really. Take care. Three, four, five.